Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we scour hundreds of online poker vlogger hands to bring you 10 of the best. And this week we've got it all. We've got blind all-ins four ways. We've got the only way to play pocket deuces and a laugh that just has to be heard to be believed. So let's make a start. At number 10, it is Andrew Locke. He's playing at the Matrix Casino in San Jose, California in a 2-3 game. And, well... I then get a sign that a double up is in order as I go from pocket fives to pocket tens. There are two limps, hijack raises to 20, and a three bet to 70 from the cutoff. Early position limper folds, middle position limper calls, as does the hijack. We take a flop three ways, which comes queen 10 deuce with a diamond draw and giving me Steph Curry's jersey number. Middle position checks and the initial raise on the hijack leads for 100. Both players have pretty shallow stacks, so I just jam. Middle position folds and hijack calls for 280 total. Expecting to have the best hand just about always, we go to a run out of a nine of diamonds and the eight of hearts. Pretty rough run out, but it turns out I was behind the whole way as I get set under set. Definitely don't expect to see that hand, but hey, at least I was right about a double up being in order. At number nine, and Yale Greenfield is playing in a 5-10 game at the Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida. And they're all in blind. Four ways. <laughs> Who's joining in this hand? So last hand of the night here, a couple of the action players, including the billionaire, are going to go home. So it is proposed that we do a $665 flip because one of the four guys that's involved has exactly $665 left. So that's how we come to this number. So we intentionally are not looking at our hand here. When we say a flip, it's basically blind. It's cold. We're not doing anything. There's no poker strategy here. But as a pro, you want to appease the guys who come in and give action. They don't have to be there. So this is a fun way to get involved, get a little gambling going. Maybe sometimes people even go on tilt. Now, I'm not saying that you should do flips for hundreds of dollars in your games at home. But doing a flip, giving some people some action every now and again is definitely a good thing to do in general. Now, the way they like to do these is that nobody peels their hand. So we don't have any idea what we've got, but we do know that we could win a pot of $2,660. Pick me. <laughs> so everybody agrees to check in turn all the way down to the river here. And now it's time for the big reveal. Give me an ace or a queen. That is not. And when we turn over a five of clubs as our first card, we seem to be in quite a bit of trouble. I feel like an ace is our only shot at, at maybe winning this pot. Probably a king sometimes, too. I mean, there are only three other opponents here. Ace! Ace! And when we turn over an eight, it's not meant to be. Middle position, the guy who only had $665, which is how we picked the size, turns over the winner with ace three offsuit. And this is how our session's going to end today. And number eight this week, it's Huggy. He's playing in a 1-2 game at the Lodge in Austin. And the river really just rubs it in, doesn't it? More than a half hour later, we've got four dues suited in diamonds in the big blind. Everyone folds the button who raises it up to $10. The small blind calls, and I decide to join along to defend. And we get a pretty great flop of four eight deuce with two spades. So we flop bottom two pair, and in all likelihood, our hand is going to be good here. We both check the button who c-bets for $10. The small blind calls, and I check raise to 50 out of position. Both players end up making the call, so I'm hoping for a clean turn, which we get in the form of the queen of hearts. The small blind checks, and both players have only a little left behind, so I push all in, having them both covered. Just the button calls for his last 143. We show our hands, and our opponent's got pocket aces. Ooh. Queen. <laughs> you can still hit it. Oh! Sorry, man. Wow, All right. you are running like fire. <laughs> that was a lucky flop, for sure. Nah, no, but you're crazy showing it. <laughs> at number seven, Poker Face Ash back at her home casino, Lone Butte in Chandler, Arizona. She's playing in the 2 3 game there. And uh, I don't know, is there a difference between trips and a set? Let me know in the comments. 
and this hand the cutoff raises to 15. I look down at pocket jacks on the button and I'm happy to put in a three bet with this hand and I make it $45. My buddy Andrew cold calls from the big blind and the original razor calls so we're going three ways to a flop. The flop is king, queen, 10 with two diamonds. We flop an open ender but of course we've got the two over cards up there. Kinda sucks. The big blind checks, the original razor checks, and I decide to check back with my pair of jacks and my open ender. The turn is a very interesting card. It is an offsuit jack, so we make trips on this four card straight board, and the big blind checks, the original razor checks, and I decide to check back. I can only beat bluffs at this point, and there's no reason to put money in the pot. We can just hope that the board will pair, and we can possibly bluff catch on a river, but the river is a terrible, terrible card. It is an offsuit nine. The big blind puts out a bet of about $200. The original razor folds and now it's on me. This is a very polarizing bet. He's saying he either has an ace or absolutely nothing. Best case scenario, we chop. Even though I had a set, it's now downgraded to absolutely nothing. I gotta put in the fold. So he takes down the pot and he said that he had ace jack suited. And number six, and Brad Owen is in the 5-10 game at the Bellagio in Vegas. Another well-played hand from Brad, of course. But what I want to know is what happened in the previous hand. The link to the full video, as with all the videos we feature, is in the description down below. Go check it out. She's probably also a cat thief. We're dealt 10-9 suited on the button. A player in middle position raises to 30. The hijack calls. There's a good squeeze opportunity. We're going to be three betting this hand in this situation about half the time. I make it 130. I can potentially win $75 without seeing a flop. If I don't take it down immediately, my hand plays well in position. The initial preflop raiser folds. He's who I was most concerned about. The hijack calls for 100 more. We're heads up in position. The flop comes king 10 6 rainbow. We've got middle pair and some backdoor draws. The opponent checks. I'm in kind of a strange situation. My hand isn't super strong, but it could definitely be best. I bet 100 to keep control of the pot and deny some equity. This will probably get folds out of some hands like small to medium pocket pairs that didn't improve. Some hands that are beating me might call like king queen suited, and then some hands that I'm ahead of might call like ace queen, ace jack, and queen jack. The hijack matches my bet. I'm still not quite sure exactly where I'm at. The turn is the four of hearts. The opponent checks. I don't want this pot to get too large when I have showdown value. I check back for pot control. The river is the eight of spades. I'm glad that it wasn't an ace, queen, or jack. If I was ahead on the flop and turn, I'm probably still ahead, unless I happen to have run into pocket eights. The hijack is assembling chips. My read is that he's contemplating whether or not to bet as a bluff with a missed straight draw. I checked back turn for pot control. I don't like folding to bets after doing that on previous streets. If the hijack actually fires a 270 that it appears he's considering betting, I'm going to call because I don't 100% believe that he has me beat. Having a 10 is a key card, making it less likely that he'd have a set or two pair. He would have probably 3-bet ace-king preflop, and I don't see this particular player wanting to bet for value in this situation with a hand like king-queen or king-jack, although other opponents certainly might. I think he'd prefer to check call in those instances, or just get the showdown for free. In my mind, it's more probable that a bet from him would be an attempt to steal the pot with ace or queen high. The opponent shows some restraint and checks. There's no need for me to bet since I doubt I'd get called by worse. I check back with the winner. The opponent shows ace-jack offsuit for a missed draw. That's what I thought. I was going to call if you bet. I thought you had ace-queen or ace-jack. Thanks. In at number five, and Lexo is playing in the 5-10 game of the Lodge in Austin, Texas. And this, Lexo, is the only way to play pocket deuces. I'm in the straddle in this hand with pocket deuces. Cutoff makes it 75. Button calls. I call 75. Deuce. We make bottom set. The action checks all the way around. The turn is the six of hearts, bringing a flush draw. I lead out for $150. And now the initial raiser, who didn't see about the flop, decides to call. So I feel like he most likely has a flush draw here. The button makes to fall. We're heads up to the river, which is the deuce of hearts. We make quads. All right, that is what I'm talking about. Finally, some run good here in Texas. We river quads and the backdoor flush gets there. Like I said before, I think my opponent will have a flush here a lot of the time. I expect him to be c-betting most of his pairs on the flop. So I decide to bet small here, $175, trying to induce a raise by him from a flush. He may even have a smaller pocket pair that he checked back on the flop that he wants to call with here. He goes into the tank and thinks for a while and decides to put 
in the raise. 650 bucks. Sweet baby Texas Jesus. We river quads and our opponent puts in a raise to $650. He has about $1,300 left. So you guys already know what is going down. I think for a while and decide to jam all in. The cutoff is visibly frustrated. As I can imagine, he most likely has a flush here and obviously he's worried about me having a bigger flush or that the board is paired and I have a full house. He goes into the tank for a while and he mentions something. He says, this is never a bluff, and to be honest, he's basically spot on. I mean, there's not many hands that I would be doing this with, 3-bet jamming all in on the river when he only has $1,300 left. I would most likely do this with a nut flush. I would do this with all my full houses and quads, obviously. This line I took is super strong. He is right. I'm going to have it here probably 100% of the time. Some hands I could bluff with would be like ace seven or ace five with ace of hearts, blocking the nut flush and blocking some of his full house combinations. He thinks for a while, exposes king ten of hearts for the king high flush and folds. I got a show for the camera. I finally got a bluff through, baby. Let's go. At number four, and this week, Jack, one of the three lads from Next Gen Poker, is playing in the Rockford Charitable Games in Chicago, Illinois. It's a one-two cash game, and Jack, you could have run it twice. Final hand a note from me, and this one is a fun one. We've got Ace, Eight of Spades in the small blind. $500 in our stack, Under the Gun opens a 10, and he gets a call from Under the Gun 2, Cut off. I call in the small blind for nine more dollars and we're off to a flop four ways and it's seven four deuce with two spades. We've got the nut flush draw and some backdoor straight draws. Under the gun continues the story for $25 when check two. Under the gun plus two calls and it folds around to me. Here I'm faced with the decision again. I can play this passively. This board is dry enough that I think under the gun can continue on this board with a lot of over cards. In that case, I'm going to put him to the test here with my strong draw. I check raised $110. As expected, under the gun quickly folds and under the gun 2 goes into the tank. Listen in to what he says. I really don't think you fucked this up, man. Don't the I don't believe it. I got the blockers. I want to I want to play all night. I don't want to go down and flames here. He literally tells me he doesn't want to go home. He thinks that I have a set and that I want him to call. And eventually he does decide on a call. And when the turn is the five of diamonds, one of the best cards in the deck to make my draw even stronger, we pick up a double gut shot to go along with our nut flush draw. I'm not gonna hesitate to put him to the ultimate test here. I ship it all in and he's got 250 behind. He goes into the tank. And eventually he decides to make the call. Oh boy, we're gonna need to bink a river. I ask him to run it twice. He says, no, all right, let's see what happens. And the river comes, the five of spades. We drill the nut flush, the board paired, but I'm not too scared of it. I show him and he tells me I rivered him. We got him good this time and we scooping in a pot our way. At number three, and Harry B is at the Seminole Casino in Coconut Creek, Florida, playing the 510 game. And these are the hands you wait for all night, sometimes all week. In my case, oh yeah. Within the first orbit, we already have a premium. Pocket kings and there's action beforehand. We're in the hijack and there's a low jack raise to $40. $40 is not enough with pocket kings. We're definitely going to be putting in another raise. We decide on a sizing of $150. Action folds back around to the low jack player and he is the only customer. So we're going heads up to a flop in position which comes down queen queen three. So relatively safe. Once again, not worried about too much on this board. We double block king queen, so the only hand that I'm truthfully that worried about is ace queen. We also have the king of clubs on our hand, so I'm not too worried about the front door flush. When he checks over to me, definitely want to put in a bet. I throw out $110, and he decides to make the call. We're off to see a turn which is an absolute brick. It's a four of spades. He checks over me once again, and I'm still pretty confident in my hand. We can still target hands such as like eights through jacks that I think would definitely be calling another bet. And also, if I had any bluffs in the spot, such as like ace king of clubs, I'll be betting on this card regardless. So definitely want to be doing it with my strong hands as well. I decide to throw out a bet of $300. And once again, he's not deterred. He decides to make the call. To be completely honest with you, when he just calls on this card, I actually feel better about my hand. If he had a queen, I'd imagine he want to raise for value and then also deny any equity from any flush draw. 
The river is a eight of diamonds, which now a hand that we lose to is pocket eights, but I'm not too worried about that. If he has eights, you know, so be it. He checks it over me once again, and now it's a question of what I want to be doing. He started the hand with around $1,500, so he has around $900 to $800 left in a stack. With less than a pot size bet, if I had any busted club draws here, I definitely would be putting him to the test, so I see no reason why I shouldn't be doing that when I have a strong hand such as the one I have now. A hand such as nines through jacks should still feel good about their hand on the river, considering that this whole card doesn't really change too much. With that being said, I throw out a bet of $750, basically almost putting him all in, and obviously kind of hoping for a call targeting the hands mentioned, but unfortunately for us, he says two words that make us throw up in our mouth. He says all in, meaning that he's playing for all of his $900. So now it's $150 more to me to make this call, knowing that we are literally never good here, hardly ever, but we are just getting an insane, just literally the most insane price I've ever been laid ever in a hand. So disgustingly, I make the call and he shows us flopped quads. So it's very rare to flop quads and it is especially rare to get absolutely max value like he did. Maybe I'm being results oriented, but I think betting a third on the river and folding to a raise might be a better line, but luckily for him, I bet larger and had a call off of jam, but uh, yeah. And a number two, Ashley Sleeth is playing in the 2-5 game at the Aria in Vegas. And what do we think? Does her opponent have an ace? So as I'm getting ready to leave, Hijack limps in for five bucks. I make it 25 on the button with pocket queens. Get a nice premium to end the night. Big blind three bets though. He's been playing very snug for the past four hours. He three bets to 100 from the big blind. So it was a little bit scary, but I have queens. I'm not going anywhere. The limper folds. I make the call. The flop comes down five four deuce with two hearts. He continues for 115 and I have a pretty easy call. The turn is an offsuit seven. Again, he bets $210. So now his range is really narrowed to like over pairs, ace X of hearts, maybe, maybe a wheel ace if you three bet that pre, I'm not sure. Obviously pocket aces, pocket kings. I beat most of that, so I make the call. The river is an offsuit ace. Really interesting card here. I think that a lot of people would be scared of it, but when you really look at it, it's like how many ace X does he have? He does have like the flush draw ace X, he has pocket aces, and then he has, you know, some limited amount of ace queen and he has ace king. But he doesn't always double barrel ace king and he doesn't always double barrel ace queen and I have two queens. So I don't know, I really feel like maybe the ace is just like a card that he looked at and was like, I'm gonna just bluff this card but he only bet $315. And I don't know, I feel like if he was trying to get me off a hand like Queens, Jacks, 10, something like that, he would probably go a little bigger. So I went back and forth for a really long time, went well into the tank, landed on a fold, and he called out my hand. He asked me if I had pocket Queens, and uh, it doesn't feel good. <laughs> it doesn't feel good when your opponent calls out your actual hand. But, you know, he also knew I was vlogging and he didn't show the vlog a bluff and he knew I was leaving. So I feel like, I don't know, if he had a bluff, he'd probably show. Or at least that's what I'm going to tell myself to sleep better tonight. Always sad to take a hit right before you're about to leave, but that concludes the meetup game. And at number one for week four, January 2022, it's Huggy. He's playing in the 1-2 game at the Lodge in Austin, Texas. And keep an ear out for villain number one. Wait, you probably won't need to. Ten minutes later, we pick up ace-10 offsuit in the cutoff. The player on my right, who's pretty inebriated and has been raising way too many hands, opens for $11. I've been waiting for an opportunity to get it in against this opponent since he's been playing so loose, and I expect him to have a very wide range here. I triple his bet, making it $33. The loose three better from the last hand, Cold calls my re-raise from the big blind, and it folds back to the initial raiser. He thinks for a moment before raising it back up, making it 116 total. I'm going to speed this up a bit so you can see how long I think on it, but I'm actually torn on what to do. It's either shove or fold at this point. The question is, did I actually run into an actual hand here, or is he just getting out of line? Finally, I decide to go with it, pushing all in. The third player ends up going all in as well, and the guy on my right does the same. So we're in a three-way all in, and I'm starting to think I've got the worst of it. <laughs> oh, boy. 
Yeah. I'm in trouble. Do twice or what? Right, whatever. I don't care. I'll do. I'll do twice if you guys want. I, I, I know. I showed my hand once. Oh, once. Right, I showed right. my hand once. I'm down. I'm down for twice too. He, once. he said once. He I said once. once. I showed my hand already. So yeah. Right. yeah. Two seventy four for the main. He said once. Yeah, I show my hand already, so we have to do it once. Yeah. Why? In my opinion, Makes that's the way that I do things. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way things I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I made the decision that way. It's once, one time. You have a pen? No. No, I, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you? you Shit, ace? we have the same hand, huh? Hey, you have an ace too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got a queen on queen action yeah, or what, jack. baby? What? Oh, yeah, queen or jack. Nope. <laughs> yeah. What you got? He's got the he's got the jack, right? Yeah, no, the I'm queen. You got the queen. You gotta have the queen. Aye, For the aye, overcall, aye. you got here the queen. Here you go. Here, so here is what I meant to give you a teddy ball game tip. Free free <laughs> teddy ball game tip. Oh, love me a free tip. Thank you. <laughs> teddy ball game. All right. Should I pull out my money to rebuy now or? <laughs> Oh! Ugh. Diamond! Oh, shit. Oh, shit. oh, Jack might be good. Jack? Oh, alright. Oh, I got super lucky. <laughs> I got super lucky. You played that, you played that sneaky. It turns out both players had ace king and we hit our three outer for the scoop. Not my finest hour, but I was prepared to rebuy and it happened to work out for me this time. Right? <laughs> I'm more asking them. <laughs> I already showed my hand. I don't know what else to do. Player check. How are you rolling that? <laughs> yep, I am pretty sure that's my Uncle David at the table. Thanks for watching, everyone. We really appreciate the support. We'll be back next week with another 10 of the best. Until then, good luck at the felt.